At its launch, the Inspire One was a revolution. It turned tens of thousands of people into aerial filmmakers and now appears on professional film sets around the world. The Inspire Two builds on this foundation, empowering filmmakers to be more creative than ever, whether flying as a team or operating as a single pilot. A dedicated two-axis stabilized FPV camera with independently adjustable pitch gives the pilot a personal live feed, freeing the camera up to move any way they need to to get the shot. Top speed is boosted to 58 miles per hour, 94 kilometers per hour, and ascent and descent is also accelerated. This speed doesn't come without protection. DJI's unmatched flight autonomy system comes to the Inspire 2, bringing with it an extended range of close to 100 feet, meaning faster flight with protection from what it can see. It also adds an infrared sensing system placed on top of the Inspire, extending obstacle avoidance to obstructions overhead. The new dual battery design increases flight time, hitting a maximum of 27 minutes when using the X4S camera, and also provides battery redundancy. Self-heating systems mean the Inspire 2 can be flown in extreme cold. The Zenmuse X5S Micro Four Thirds camera now has a 20.8 megapixel sensor with better pixel performance. It is capable of capturing 5.2K at 30 frames per second, as well as 4K at 60 frames per second. It also supports cinema DNG and ProRes recording. And you just kind of look at it and you go like, that's really small, but how can this little small thing give these big results? Normally I wouldn't think of using a drone for normal shots, but it kind of made this really simple shot easily, you know, and looked great. And I'm really, I'm just, I'm telling you, I'm really picky. The Inspire 2 is DJI Focus compatible for precision focus control. A broad range of Micro Four Thirds lenses are also supported, including zooms from 9mm to 45mm. The 45 is pretty beautiful on this camera. We use that a lot for close-ups and has a great depth of field and just makes me feel like, you know, that's kind of cinematic for me. The Inspire 2 image processor, known as Cinecore 2.0, offers Cinema DNG, ProRes, H.264 and H.265 recording onto a detachable PCIe SSD drive with a maximum read and write speed of 6 gigabits per second or a micro SD card. ProRes is a widely used delivery method for post-production, offering flexibility for editing while not compromising image quality. But to get the absolute most out of what you shoot, the Inspire 2 also captures RAW. Acquiring content on RAW just gives you more information uh, to work with in your post process. The RAW native Cinema DNG format gives you the most dynamic range possible of that camera. Basically takes full advantage of the sensor and everything that it can see. There isn't one shot that we compromised for detail, for color purity, for separation of images, for black, for low light detail, high light detail. Well, I never could have told you that this particular footage came from a drone. It's just too good. New intelligent modes, including Spotlight Pro and Profile, make cinematic shots easier for production teams and even for single operators. Spotlight Pro keeps the camera locked on the subject, rotating beyond 360 degrees to fix the target in frame as the Inspire flies. While Profile Mode turns the camera to capture the subject's profile as the Inspire flies forward. By maintaining forward flight, obstacle sensing systems are able to protect the aircraft. The onboard FPV camera separates the flight view from the main camera view, effectively giving the Inspire 2 a dedicated tap fly camera. Just tap on the screen to fly in that direction and focus on camera control. During return to home, the primary camera with a maximum sensing range of 200 meters is used to effectively avoid obstructions. Live TV broadcasting has also been enabled natively through an optimized broadcast mode that streams smooth video at the 1080i50 and 720p60 live broadcast standard. The Inspire 2 brings better quality images, more power, and more intelligence to professional aerial filmmaking, setting the stage for more filmmakers to take to the sky. This is Mavic 
Air 2. You may have some questions, like... So what's different? Well, let's start with the larger sensor. There's a lot more pixels, 48 megapixels to be exact, which means you can do this, and then shoot a hyperlapse in 8K. With Smart Photo, every shot is a masterpiece. Yeah, but photos aren't really my thing. Don't worry. We've got you covered. It also does 4K 60p video. You can also slow things down. Wait, no. Oh. And yes, there's HDR video. How's the flight time? It's fantastic. You're looking at up to 34 minutes in the air. A new record for the Mavic series. We've added OcuSync 2.0, so you can fly longer and see clearer. What if I'm not a great pilot? That's where Focus Track comes in, so you can fly like a pro. Or just press a button. Here's the best part. Automatic obstacle avoidance. Okay, but what do I do with all these shots? Here's an idea. Use the DJI Fly app to edit and share your moments with just a tap. So, what's different? A whole lot. This quick video will walk you through the steps of operating the Typhoon H Plus in its first flight. Flying this aircraft is easy and fun, and it should only take you a few flights before you're comfortable flying to explore your creative interests. Start by choosing the right location. 
select an open area that is free of people, power lines, and buildings. Remember to stay away from any major airports that have commercial activity. There's a no-fly zone within a 5-mile radius of these airports. Take the fully charged battery and insert it into the Typhoon H+. You'll hear a positive click when the battery is fully seated. Then power up the ST16S controller by sliding the power switch to the left. When the main screen loads, hold down the power button on the Typhoon H Plus for a few seconds until you hear a rising tone. To ensure your first flight is a success, be sure to calibrate your drone. Step at least 20 feet away from the Typhoon H Plus, making sure the area is clear of people and that you have a solid GPS lock. First, press and hold the red start stop button for 3 seconds. The rotors of the Typhoon H Plus will then spool up, awaiting your command. The goal on takeoff is to get in the air quickly, so apply full left stick forward. When you reach a comfortable altitude, let the left stick center and the aircraft will remain at that altitude. You can then retract the landing gear by toggling the switch on the upper right corner of the controller. With the landing gear up, your camera will have a clear 360 degree view. To control speed, use the turtle and rabbit slider located on the back side of the controller. The Typhoon H Plus also has a sport mode. This mode increases the overall sensitivity of the aircraft and gives you more flight speed. Your Typhoon H Plus comes equipped with 5 autonomous flight modes to help you take your creativity to the next level. You can select your flight mode from the main screen on your ST16S controller. You can land the aircraft automatically or manually. Regardless of the option you choose, make sure the landing gear is clear in all cases. The easiest method is to simply select RTL on the mode switch. The Typhoon H Plus will automatically come back to the launch area. It will automatically lower the landing gear, land, and shut off the rotors. To land manually, bring the Typhoon H Plus to a hover over the landing area and lower the landing gear by toggling the gear switch on the right front of the controller. When you're ready to land, hold the left stick all the way down and the Typhoon H Plus will land softly. Finally, shut down the rotors with the red button on the left of your controller. Then you can turn off your Typhoon H Plus by holding down the power button until you hear a descending tone. When you hear the tone, you can power down the controller by sliding the power switch to the right. Welcome to the unique family and happy flying!